The 14 Tablets of Lord Inki The First Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 1 colon 1, this portion details what appears to be an atomic war on Earth between the Anunnaki. They speak of an evil wind that seems to be a radioactive cloud that kills everyone in its path, including both the gods and mankind. It says that this is the worst thing to happen since the Great Flood. Chapter 1 colon 2, this portion talks about a time, long ago, on the Anunnaki's home planet of Nibiru. They seem to think that they came to life from what our evolutionists would call a sort of primordial soup. It mentions the planet's thick atmosphere, vegetation, and its cycles around the sun with hot and cold periods. During the cold periods, the planet's inner heat keeps Nibiru warm. Disputes started that ended with the use of what we would consider atomic bombs. It devastated their planet, then peace was made and a kingship was established for the entire planet. Chapter 1 colon 3, this portion tells of the kingship lineage on Nibiru and the king's marriages. O married his brother's daughter. Chapter 1 colon 4, this portion explains that the Anunnaki's home planet of Nibiru is having trouble with a breach in its atmosphere. The remedy is to place finely powdered gold into the upper atmosphere in order to repair it. This decision was not made until after a fight had occurred amongst the Anunnaki, ending with the killing of the king by his brother. Chapter 1 colon 5 this portion explains that the Anunnaki Council decided that the Anunnaki who killed the king should be given the throne. There was no punishment for his killing of the king. Chapter 1 colon 6, this portion details how the new king tries to heal the planet's atmosphere by detonating atomic bombs inside of volcanoes. This does no good and the Anunnaki are displeased. The next person in line for the throne challenges the king and defeats him in a wrestling match. The king escapes the Anunnaki by jumping in a spacecraft, leaving Nibiru and heading towards Earth. The Second Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 2 colon 1, this portion tells of the defeated king's escape from Nibiru and his plan to go to the snow-covered Earth. The spaceship he took was equipped with atomic bombs and his plan was to use them to blow a path through the asteroid belt which had previously kept the Anunnaki from going to Earth. Chapter 2 colon 2, this portion describes the defeated king's arrival on Earth. Chapter 2 colon 3, this portion tells of the defeated king's first days on Earth and his finding the air, fruit, and fish pleasing. He also found traces of the gold that Nibiru needed for the repair of its atmosphere. He calls the new king of Nibiru and wants to make a deal. The Third Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 3 colon 1, this portion tells of the defeated king's attempts to bribe the new king with his knowledge of the gold on earth and to have his kingship reinstated. Chapter 3 colon 2 this portion details the ending of their negotiations. A team will be sent to Earth to see if there is gold. If there is gold, the defeated king will have another wrestling match with the new king, with the winner receiving kingship of the throne. Chapter 3 colon 3, this portion tells of the Anunnaki traveling to Earth. They briefly stop on Mars for water, then proceed to Earth and land there. Chapter 3 colon 4, this portion tells of the Anunnaki's first six days on Earth. They found plenty of food, water, fish, and animals. Chapter 3 colon 5, this portion describes the Anunnaki team leader declaring the seventh day to be a day of rest. Metals were processed from the waters. The day, month, and year were given their names. Chapter 3 colon 6, this portion tells about the Anunnaki searching for and finding gold on Earth, but not in great quantities. 
The remaining atomic bombs on the defeated King's spacecraft were taken out and hidden in a cave. They are not to be used again to make a way through the asteroid belt. And an Anunnaki team member leaves Earth to take the first shipments of gold back to Nibiru. The Fourth Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 4 colon 1, this portion starts off with the spaceship with the first shipments of Earth's gold arriving on Nibiru. Word was received from Earth that larger deposits of gold were found underground. A high-ranking Anunnaki was placed in charge of the Earth operations. He departed Nibiru and arrived on Earth. Chapter 4 colon 2 this portion tells of the new king on Nibiru coming to Earth to see for himself where the gold is located underground. A plan is developing to see which of his sons will go back to Nibiru and which one will stay and command operations on Earth. This is needed to be done because of a rivalry between his two sons which is due to both of them being eligible for the next kingship. Chapter 4 colon 3 this portion tells of the new king and his two sons drawing lots to see what jobs they will perform. When decisions are announced, the defeated king restates his case for the second wrestling match for the throne. The wrestling match ends with the new king again beating the already once defeated king. After the end of the match, the defeated king bites off the penis of the new king and swallows it. The defeated king is then tied and bound. While the new king is healing, the belly of the defeated king swells from the semen of the new king's penis. A court convenes and is deciding what to do with the defeated king. The new king's son wants to kill him. Chapter 4 colon 4 This portion tells of the new king deciding to place the defeated king on Mars in exile until he dies. The new king returns to Nibiru and tells of all that happened and of the plans to harvest the gold on Earth. The plans include making relay stations on Mars and possibly on Earth's moon. The Earth is again referenced as Eden. Chapter 4 colon 5, this portion describes the building of specific Earth-moving equipment, spaceships, and rockets on Nibiru for use on Earth. The Earth's shorter cycles and atmosphere affect the Anunnaki. A group of more Anunnaki, including some women that have healing skills, leave Nibiru for Earth. They stop on Mars to see if the defeated king has died and to start a relay station there. The rest of the group continues on to Earth. The Fifth Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 5 colon 1, this portion tells of the latest group of Anunnaki arriving on Earth. The son that has been put in command of support for the gold harvesting on Earth greets his sister, who is one of the healers. They fly off to the king's son's living quarters, which he built on a mountain. They express love for one another and discuss their son on Nibiru wanting to come to Earth. They fly back to Eden and he flies her around, telling her of his plans. More and more Anunnaki arrive from Nibiru. Chapter 5 colon 2, there are now 300 Anunnaki on Mars and 600 on Earth. This portion tells of the immortality of and ignorant decisions that were made by some of the Anunnaki. The king's daughter that is making love to the king's son is promised to the king's other son by the king. When it is found out that the other son and daughter have been sleeping together, the daughter is forbidden to marry anyone. The king's son that was making love to his sister rapes a young female healer who is under the command of the sister that he was sleeping with. The offending king's son is exiled to a barren place on earth, but the Anunnaki that were tasked with taking him to exile instead purposely take him to the cave where the seven atomic bombs that were taken off of the defeated king's spaceship are stored. Chapter 5 colon 3, the raped young female healer is brought before the seven judges and she tells them that she is pregnant. 
They ask her if she will take the king's son that raped her as her husband. She says she will. The exiled king's son is returned to Eden. The other king's son that is in charge of getting the gold from underground is living in that area of earth. His father had promised him his daughter in marriage, but instead banished her from marriage when the king found out about her and his other son sleeping together. Now the king's son who is in charge of getting the gold asks her to join him in his dwelling. He and his half-sister have a newborn daughter. He wanted a son. She has another daughter. He cries out that he wants a son, but she curses him. He now has terrible health problems. Only upon swearing to stay away from her vagina does she give him relief from her curse. She returns to Eden. He summons his wife and child on Nibiru to come to Earth. He has five sons by his wife and other Anunnaki women. The king's other son, after parting with his sister, raped a young healer and later married her. Now he and the sister that he loves call their son from Nibiru to Earth, but he is married and has a son by his wife. This set up a rivalry between the king's two sons on Earth, leading to war. The gold is getting to Nibiru and made into a fine dust which is then placed into the atmosphere, which is slowly healing. There are now five Anunnaki cities on Earth. The Agigi are starting to complain about the workload. The Agigi on Mars are complaining the most. The commander of Mars is brought to Earth to show him the workings there. Chapter 5 colon 4 the commander of Mars is shown the workings on Earth. He secretly desires to be the king, so he steals the tablets of destinies from Eden. He believes that he cannot be defeated while he has them, but he is defeated and sentenced to death. He died in the 25th Shar. A Shar is believed to be 3,600 Earth years. 25 shars would place his execution at approximately 90,000 earth years after the Anunnaki first came to earth. The earth's Anunnaki leaders come up with a plan to refine the gold on earth and only take refined gold to Nibiru. That will leave space on the craft for Igiji to travel to Nibiru for rest. The king agrees. Chapter 5 colon 5 the king's son who is in charge of the gold mining now directs his attention to the life and animals on earth and how they differ from Nibiru. Mentioned are the animals in the tall trees that use their front legs as hands. Other creatures were seen in tall grasses walking upright. The Agigi in the mines rebel. The king's two sons and others devise a plan to return the rebelling Anunnaki to Nibiru and replace them with new Anunnaki workers. They also decide to create a Lulu. The Sixth Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 6 colon 1, there is much discussion about creating a primitive worker slave race of beings. One of the king's sons states that the father of all beginning has the sole power of creation. The other king's son says that the being already exists and that they would not be slaves, but helpers. The other king's son says that this would be against the rules of planet to planet journeying. The other's king's son states that it was against the rules to even come to earth. After much debate, the king decreed that the primitive slave was to be created. Chapter 6 colon 2, in this portion, it states that they took parts from the behind of one animal and combined it with the front of another. In other words, they were experimenting with DNA. This king's son had already created creatures from DNA and violated the rules before the arguments had even begun. Given the right to proceed by the king, 
they try to mix the DNA of the Earth's two-legged creatures with theirs and place it in the two-legged Earth female creature's womb. There were many conceptions, but the results were not good. Many creatures were created that suffered from deformities. Chapter 6 colon 3, after all attempts had failed, they finally decided to not impregnate an Earth two-legged female again, but to instead use an Anunnaki female. The Anunnaki female that had been doing the DNA splicing decided to be impregnated herself. She conceived and gave birth to a boy child. She named him Adam. They then decided to ask the young female Anunnaki healers from Nibiru if they would be willing to be impregnated as well. 7 Step Forward Chapter 6 colon 4, the seven Anunnaki female healers were impregnated with a combination of the two-legged earth female creature and Adam. The seven gave birth to seven male children. Upon realizing the problem of the demand on the seven Anunnaki women, they decided to make female children and let them procreate themselves. The wife of an Anunnaki was asked, and she gave her consent to be impregnated. The birth was not normal, but the female child was good. Chapter 6 colon 5, seven more females were created for the seven males. Adam and Eve are moved to Eden and the seven males and females are placed in cages amongst the trees. The time for them to procreate has come and gone. No conceptions. Some DNA is taken from the king's son and the woman that was doing the DNA spicing and placed in Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are then left to roam Eden as they please. Chapter 6 colon 6, in this portion, the king's son who rules over Eden notices that Adam and Eve have leaves on them. He is upset and summons the other king's son who was part of the creation to explain. He in turn summons his other accomplices in the creation. They all explain the missing DNA, which makes the son in charge of Eden more upset. He had warned of the folly. One of those in the creation speaks up and says that the Anunnaki long life was not given to them. The son in charge of Eden commands them to take their creations out of Eden. Adam and Eve did not leave Eden because they ate the fruit of the forbidden tree, they were expelled because the Anunnaki scientists gave them the DNA to procreate and the commander of Eden was mad. Eve was not tempted. None of it was within Adam and Eve's control. The Seventh Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 7 colon 1, Adam and Eve are placed in a, an enclosure outside of the city of Eden. They had many children. The Anunnaki now have three generations on Earth. The Adams are working in the fields and mines. The gold is flowing. The earth is warming. The snow is melting. Volcanoes erupt and the ground shakes. The Agigi are complaining on Mars of high winds and dust storms. The asteroid belt is in turmoil. On earth brimstones are falling. It appears that Nibiru passed close by earth, somehow causing a lot of trouble in the skies. A large asteroid hit the moon. Chapter 7 colon 2, in this portion, the Anunnaki contemplate abandoning the relay station on Mars. It has now been 80 shars on Earth. Note that the Anunnaki that first came to Earth 288,000 years earlier are still alive. Anunnaki go to the moon and study many things. Chapter 7 colon 3, since the Mars relay was to be abandoned, a new spaceship port was to be created on Earth for direct transport of gold to Nibiru. The king comes to Earth to see the newly created spaceport. 
Chapter 7 colon 4, Division again begins between the king's sons and their offspring. The primitive workers are captured outside of the city of Eden and brought into the city. They are given chores and jobs to do. In those days, grains and sheep were not brought to earth. The king's son that created mankind has a new scheme, but he notices that mankind is reverting backward. Chapter 7 colon 5, The King's Son Who Created Adam and Eve Was Them One day, he spied several young Eves and decided to impregnate them with his sperm. They gave birth. It is now the 92nd Shar that the Anunnaki have been on earth. The King's Son is ecstatic about the births and says that he has created civilized men. He wants this to be a secret. He tells his vizier to conceal the two children in his house and to say that they were found in reed baskets in the bulrushes. The king's son and his wife raised them. The king's son very deceitfully passed them off, not as his own offspring, but instead as a new, more intelligent generation of Adams and Eves. He calls for grains and ewes to be brought to earth so that they may herd the sheep and harvest grain. Once the male and female children procreate, the king on Nibiru wants the earthling male to come to Nibiru for a visit. The Eight Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 8 colon 1, the spacecraft that was sent to pick up the male arrives. The king's son sends his other offspring along to accompany the male. The king's son tricks the male by telling him not to eat or drink the long life things because it is poison and he will die. The craft leaves and they arrive on Nibiru. The king sees his grandchildren and an earthling for the first time. Chapter 8 colon 2, on Nibiru, the earthling is offered the long life bread and elixir. He does not eat or drink. The king becomes offended and asks him why not. He says that he will die. One of the king's grandsons gives the king a tablet that was given to him by his father for the purpose of giving to his father, the king. The king reads it and understands that the earthling male is the offspring of his son. The king's son wants the earthling to return to earth, and that it be his lot to live and die on earth. The real reason the king's son did not want him to eat and drink the long life food was because of concerns over any future kingship disputes since he was his son. The earthling and one of the two grandsons return to earth. Chapter 8 colon 3, the twin sons, Cain and Abel, are shown how to dig water canals and harvest grain, while the other one is taught to herd sheep and spin wool. At the first harvest, there is a celebration and the two twin earthling men make their offerings to the king's two sons. A celebration is had. Later, Cain is unhappy that one of the king's sons did not praise him for his effort. Cain and Abel fight because of this and Abel is killed. Chapter 8 colon 4, this portion tells the story of events after the killing. Cain is exiled. Chapter 8 colon 5, this portion details the teaching to the earthling offspring of the king's son. It also mentions other teachings to other offspring. The worshipping of the Anunnaki is created. This was in the 98th Shar since the Anunnaki first landed on earth. In the 104th Shar, the kingship lineage on earth, several generations down the line, are still have babies with their half-sisters. Chapter 8 colon 6, this portion tells the story of the end of the life of the first earthling male that the king's son had made by an Eve. We know this earthling male as the biblical Adam. He was born in the 93rd Shar and he died in the 108th Shar, making him 54,000 earth years old when he died. 
At this time, the Anunnaki and Earthling humans in Termeri. The Ninth Tablet of Lord Inki. Chapter 9 colon 1, at this time, the Anunnaki and Earthling humans in Termeri. Hardships occur on Earth and Mars due to the sun flaring up. One of the king's son's sons wants to marry an Earthling woman. There is an objection. The debate involves the statement that the kingship lineage marrying half-sisters is a custom. The problem with the marriage is the kingship lineage. If the kingship lineage marries an Earthling woman, the king on Nibiru could eventually become an Earthling. The king decrees that if the king's son male offspring marries an Earthling, then he cannot return to Nibiru and his prince status will end. The king's son that is commander of Earth also states that he and his new wife will not be able to stay in Eden. The king's son's male offspring marries an Earth woman. Chapter 9 colon 2, 200 of the Agigi from Mars came to the wedding. Unbeknownst to the leaders of Eden, the 200 Agigi from Mars had decided to abduct Earthling women to be their wives. After the wedding they did so. The Earth Commander, which has always been against the creation of mankind, is sorrowful that they have destroyed their original mission. A one sacred mission is now resulting in one evil deed after another. Now, the Earth will be overrun by mankind. The King's son's male offspring that had just gotten married was basically banished to another land across the sea. There, he invited the Agigi that had taken Earthling wives. The king's son that created mankind has taken a fancy to a married Earthling woman. He asks his son that married an Earthling woman that resides in the new land to ask for the Earthling woman's husband to be transferred there. The king's son that created mankind now visits the new land often and watches and seduces the women. Chapter 9 colon 3 Bathsheba becomes pregnant and has a child. The first white-bodied, blonde-haired, blue-eyed earthling is born in the 110th Shar. There are plagues and starvation on Earth. The Earth Commander feels that the Earth mission has become perverted and loathes the earthling mankind. The cries of the earthlings has become so loud that the Earth Commander cannot sleep. One Anunnaki wanted to teach the Earthlings the art of healing. The Earth Anunnaki commander said no. Water would not come from its sources where the Earthlings lived. Vegetation did not grow. The Earth commander forbade any teaching or helping of the Earthlings. He wanted the Earthlings to perish. For one shark, the Earthlings ate grasses. This continues for about five shars. There are black spots on the sun. The savants on Nibiru tell of the planets moving during Nibiru's next passing of the sun. Chapter 9 colon 4, the savants on Nibiru tell that the earth glaciers are melting and that they will lose their footing. The sliding of the glaciers will produce a great wave that will deluge the land. Earth will be overwhelmed. The king on Nibiru tells Mars and Earth to prepare for evacuation. A head savant comes to Earth with a message from the king. He informs them that the Anunnaki who are returning to Nibiru have become afflicted by becoming used to Earth cycles and not being able to adjust back to Nibiru's longer cycles. They die more quickly. One of the king's sons knew of this, but the other king's son, who is the commander of Earth, is angered. He is angry that the Earthling were becoming like them and that they were becoming like the Earthlings. He feels that they are imprisoned on planet Earth and once masters, they are now as slaves. The savant tells them that they are to remain on Earth. 
they are to go aloft in spaceships to wait out the calamity. The other Anunnaki are to be given the choice of returning or waiting out the calamity. The Anunnaki that married Earth women must choose between their wives and departure. This tablet implies that the deluge was a natural event. In the Bible, God promises to not let mankind again be destroyed by flood. The Anunnaki are gathered together and told of the event to happen and of their choices. Each decides to stay or leave. Chapter 9:5 The Anunnaki have made their choices. Afterward, they inquire about the fate of mankind. The Earth Commander declares that they shall perish. The Anunnaki shout back that they must not die. The Earth Commander admonishes his brother that created them in the first place against his wishes, that he went behind his back and interfered with his own creation. The Earth Commander makes each Anunnaki swear an oath. Assignments for preparations are given. Spacecraft are assigned. The king's son that created mankind goes behind his brother's back once again and decides to collect the DNA of the animals. The earth rumblings grow. The tenth tablet of Lord Inki. Chapter 10 colon 1. This portion tells of the king's son who created earthlings receiving a dream that tells him to inform Noah of the water disaster that is to come. Noah is to build a sturdy boat to save his family from the coming flood. Chapter 10 colon 2, Noah tricked the people into helping him build a sturdy boat. On the sixth day, the navigator arrived with a box of animal DNA. The time of the flood was the 120 shars. Noah was 10 shars old. The deluge was a combination of wave and rain. This all came about by Nibiru, in its orbit, passing close to Earth. Chapter 10 colon 3, this portion tells of the flood and the settling of Noah's boat on a mountain next to Ararat. The Anunnaki come back to Earth. The Earth commander finds Noah and is ready to kill his brother over his deceit. When all is explained, he is calmed. The only piece of their cities that is not buried is the landing pad for the spacecraft. Chapter 10 colon 4, upon the Anunnaki returning to Earth, they see utter devastation. Mars has lost its atmosphere and the water is dried up. On Earth, the Anunnaki organize and set chores to rebuild. Chapter 10 colon 5, Nibiru has been damaged by the poles of Mars and Earth. The atmosphere on Nibiru has also been damaged. Nibiru needs more gold from Earth. Earth tells the king that no gold can be mined. The mines are gone. But one Anunnaki surveying across the ocean finds gold nuggets laying on the ground. He also finds that some of Cain's people have survived. Rebuilding and preparations for new. Landing pads are being made. Chapter 10 colon 6, to land spaceships requires two mountains. No place was ideal. They build the pyramids as mountains for their spaceport. Chapter 10 colon 7, this portion tells of the Anunnaki once again being selfish, desiring power and title. They divide the lands among themselves. The Eleventh Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 11 colon 1, For the next char, peace was kept, but it is too good to last. One of the king's sons had two sons. One lived in land with his father and the other was living by the spaceport. The son by the spaceport became jealous and greedy. 
he thought that his father would leave his land to the son that lived by him, so he and his wife planned to murder the brother so that he would inherit the land. They gave a party, and when his brother fell asleep from drink, they put him in a coffin and threw him into the sea. He was not found until he was dead. The grief-stricken wife vowed revenge and took semen from her dead husband and impregnated herself. She raised a son to do her revenge. The son grew and was trained. He raised an army. The day came and her son was hit with a poison dart. Chapter 11 colon 2 In this portion, her son defeats the uncle that killed his father. He had fallen to earth in his craft. He is blinded and his testicles are squashed. The council allows him to live. The earth commander realizes that this was the first time that an earthling had raised an army. He surveys his position of having spaceports in places on lands of which he does not control. He summons his three sons and has built a spaceport, unknown to the other Anunnaki. Another love interest has sprung forth. This time it is between descendants of each of the king's sons. All but one looks forward to it bringing peace. Chapter 11 colon 3, in preparation for the wedding, it is the custom for a female relative to dress the bride. During her dressing, the bride tells of her plans for her husband. The plans are so grandiose that the female relative that is dressing her tells the groom's father. The father is alarmed and fears the king's other son's kingship lineage will get the advantage, so his plan is to have his daughter be impregnated by her brother. This way, the kingship lineage stays intact on their side of the family. After he impregnates his sister, he falls asleep. He has a dream of death. When he wakes he tells his sister, who thinks he will be accused of raping her. He runs from the city and ends up by a waterfall. The rocks are slippery and he falls to his death. The would-be bride rushes to the place where her groom's body lay. She is accused by her sister of wanting to be impregnated by her groom's brother. The advisor to the would-be bride's sister says that the sister should curse her with sixty plagues. The king's son that created mankind and is also the groom's grandfather, fashions two bloodless emissaries that cannot be harmed by death rays to go and retrieve the bride. The advisor to the bride's sister shoots the two emissaries with a ray but it does not affect them. The advisor then shows them to the lifeless body of the bride, which is hanging from a stake. The two emissaries direct a pulsar and emitter on her, put a plant of life in her mouth and sprinkle her body with the water of life. Chapter 11 colon 4, the bride had gone to the underworld in search of the groom's body. The underworld, in olden times, being the place of death. The two emissaries bring her back to life and proceed to leave the underworld taking along the groom's body. The bride wants revenge and demands the death of the groom's father, even though he did not kill his son. The bride seeks revenge by starting a war. It ends with the father of the groom trapping himself in a chamber of the pyramid. He has entombed himself and will die there if nothing is done. His father makes a deal where he will be exiled and give up kingship lineage. For everything these Anunnaki do and have done, this seems unfair. But the Earth Commander is playing politics and has gotten the upper hand. His brother, by being older, should be the next king, but by this event, the kingship lineage almost ensures the kingship will never be his brother's lineage. Chapter 11 colon 5, 
This portion deals with rescuing the father from the chamber tomb and damage done inside the pyramid to the stones, beams, and beacon. The Earth Commander also reassigns lands. This brings up another question he has for his father the king. The earthlings are multiplying faster than the Anunnaki. How do the Anunnaki get the earthlings to obey and serve them? The king decides to come to earth one more time. Chapter 11 colon 6, the spaceship beacon is relocated. The earth commander reassigns lands. The bride still wants the land that she would have had if the marriage had been completed. Nothing is given to her. This brings up another question that he has for his father, the king. The earthlings are multiplying faster than the Anunnaki. How do the Anunnaki get the earthlings to obey and serve them? The king decides to come to earth one more time. The Twelfth Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 12 colon 1, The King Decides to Come to Earth The rebuilding continues even though it has been two shars since the flood. This portion mentions the lifted eye that scans the lands, the lifted beam that penetrates all. Chapter 12 colon 2, The King Arrives and a Great Feast and Singing is Had by All. The king and his wife then sleep for several days and nights. On the sixth day, the king summons his two sons and his daughter. They account to him the layout of the new gold that they found, the space pad, etc. Then they talk about the emissary that he sent them before the flood, about how they would die if they returned to Nibiru and how that same emissary appeared to one of the sons in a dream. The king states that he did not send an emissary. They are all bewildered. Chapter 12 colon 3, many changes occur after the king's visit, including some reorganizing of the lands and a new approach to the earthlings. They were to be intermixed with the Anunnaki in the cities. They also were given a city of their own with their own king who was to be appointed by the earth commander. A point system for kingship and authority was devised and given. The bride is still filled with revenge and demands her own land. She makes a scheme and directs it the grandfather of her dead groom. He is in charge of something called M.E.S. She makes a plan to steal them from him. She arrives at his abode dressed scantily and seduces him with song and wine. So far he is falling for the deception. Chapter 12 colon 4, The bride was caught but did not have the M.E.S with her. The Earth Commander appears to have stripped his brother of the responsibility. The brother's son, back from exile, became very enraged. He demanded a sacred city of his own. The Earth Commander would not give him one. He took it upon himself and gathered some Igiji to help him. They proceeded to build the Tower of Babel. At night, the Earth Commander's forces destroyed it and scattered the people. He then gave each region a different language and alphabet to use. City kings came and went. The people sang songs about the bride who was now in charge of the M.E.S. Chapter 12 colon 5, the once exiled son of the king's son was given domain over a land which his brother lord. They quarreled for 650 earth years. The younger brother finally left at the insistence of the king's son. He left for new land across the ocean. Interestingly, the once exiled son of the king's son who created the earthlings in now called RARA now replaces the face of the lion which is next to the pyramid with his son's face. References to his younger brother are erased. 
there seems to be a history in Egypt of this type of destroying the remnants of old kings. The Anunnaki had an accurate system of counting by sixties. RA replaces it with counting by tens. Chapter 12 colon 6, this portion starts out with the father giving RA some M.ES. He gave him all knowledge, except how to revive the dead. A third region is now established and the bride is given lord over it. The king's son who she seduced and stole M.ES from now holds M.ES from her, with which she needs to rule her land. Her land is also given a totally new language. The third region was not able to communicate because of the language and almost goes to war over it. Trade does not happen and the third region did not blossom because of this language barrier. The Thirteenth Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 13 colon 1, The Third Region Did Not Blossom The Bride Neglected Her Region Other regions were not given to her. It was finally taken away from her. She was haunted by her dead groom. She built a house for nighttime pleasure. She tempted men to her bed and killed them. Gilgamesh is a king and desires long life. He tries but does not attain it and dies. Chapter 13 colon 2 R.A. is bothered by the goings on of the bride. He is now preoccupied with attaining immortality. He instructs people to go look for gold. They invade his brother's land and they become enraged. R.A. wants to rule the entire earth. The bride travels and finds a people in a land that she likes. Earthlings are taught about the constellations. Chapter 13 colon 3, The Bride and R.A. Prepare for War War begins between the two king's sons' families. The Earth Commander has a dream with the same emissary as his brother's dream. Chapter 13 colon 4, The War Progresses and the son of the king's son who created Earthlings is winning. He shouts out to the Earth Commander and the followers of whom he is the sole ruler and tells them that they should surrender, but the Earth Commander has an itch. He knows where the weapons of terror are hidden. He sends two to load them and use them, but makes sure that the people are not harmed. Chapter 13 colon 5, The Weapons of Terror Are Unleashed it is 1736 earth years since the flood. All of Ra's forces and followers are destroyed. Afterward, the wind blew an evil dark cloud that killed all in its path. Chapter 13 colon 6, this portion is a continuance of the previous portion. The 14th Tablet of Lord Inki Chapter 14 colon 1 this last portion tells of the king's two sons, Inki and Enlil, flying around and surveying the damage from the weapons of terror. The two brother talk and discuss the meaning of it all. The kingdom that Ari desired so badly is now a wasteland. The earth commander tells his brother that what Ari wanted, he can have. What he sowed he can now reap. As for the Earth Commander, he is going westward to the gold field to complete the original mission. 